today we're in Isaiah 2. I believe verse 5. Okay. So I'm in Isaiah 5. I mean Isaiah chapter 2 verse 5. And go ahead. I'm going to open up my commentary. The one that I like, which is Enduring Word. I love Enduring Word. Um, it hasn't disappointed me so far. Okay. This is actually a robe poncho. <laughs> okay. So I got it. I'm going to look for verse 5. Here it is. Okay. Before I read, I always like to start with a prayer, but to me, prayer is a little private. Um, um, so go ahead and take some time. You can pause this, say a prayer, and remember, if you're not sure what to pray and you haven't prayed in a long time, I always recommend the Lord's Prayer. Um, and you know, it's also uh, a good idea if you're just getting back into the Word, um, and you're getting back into a relationship with God, that there's gonna there's gonna be some awkwardness on your side, not on on not on God's side. Um, he's been waiting for you to come home, right? Um, so I know that when I first came back to God, um, and again I haven't shared my testimony yet, but there were some old feelings of, well, do I do the whole praise him, ask him for forgiveness? Yes. <laughs> but um, you can put your own twist on things. I mean, have a conversation with him if that's what helps you. You know, dear God, or... Um, Hello, Father. I'm here today. You know that. And I want to thank you. Thank you for giving me this day. Tell me what to do. I don't know what to do. So just reveal yourself to me. That's it. That's all you really have to pray. Um, and like I said, the Lord's Prayer is a beautiful prayer. It's biblical. It's in the Bible. So that prayer can be... Um, prayed if you have no words of your own uh that's a perfect prayer to to pray another suggestion would be to write a prayer when you don't feel like you're talking to god you feel less stress and um and there is some shame like i mean whether we admit it or not there is this feeling of shame that Now, uh, you know, at this point in my life, I'm coming back to you. I feel so bad that I did that. You know, why did I walk away from you? You weren't the problem. Your people were the problem, you know. But go ahead and write a letter. And then take out that letter and read it every day as a prayer. Okay, so go ahead and pause, pray, and come back. Okay. I'm going to start off with verse 5. Here we go. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. You, Lord, have abandoned your people, the descendants of Jacob. They are full of superstitions from the east. They practice divination like the Philistines and embrace pagan customs. Their land is full of silver and gold. There is no end to their treasures. Their land is full of horses. There is no end to their chariots. Their land is full of idols. They, ba they bow down to the work of their hands, to what their fingers have made. So people will be brought low and everyone humbled. Do not forgive them. 
Go into the rocks, hide in the ground from the fearful presence of the Lord and the splendor of his majesty. The eyes of the arrogant will be humbled and human pride brought low. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day. So I stopped at verse 11. Let's unpack that. Okay. Okay, here we go. You, Lord, have abandoned your people, the descendants of Jacob. Hmm. So, after painting the picture of the glory of the Messiah's reign, remember earlier he was talking about Isaiah, who's writing, right? He's talking about... Um, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established. And he goes on and talks about um, who will judge and there will be no war. And now he changes tones and he's talking to the Lord. And after painting the picture of the glory of the Messiah's reign, Isaiah then challenges Judah. This is the house of Jacob. To live in the Messiah's reign right now. Hmm. Okay. So he referred, so he now calls Judah descendants of Jacob. So I want to make a note of that. Sometimes we always wonder, wait a minute, we were talking about Judah. Now who's the descendants of Jacob? And I, uh, and, and it is hard to kind of keep track that these are all, this whole region is all the Israelites. And this is all in the promised land. Okay. So this, the descendants of Jacob is Judah, which is the capital of Jerusalem. We learned that yesterday. Okay. Walk in the light of the Lord. Walk in the light of the Lord. The ultimate reign of the Messiah may be many years away, but Jesus can reign in our lives, in our minds, and in our hearts right now. We don't have to wait for the enforced righteousness of the millennium to have the blessing of Jesus' righteousness in our lives right now. I have always been one of those people that believe we'll never have peace on earth. Are you one of those? I don't think peace the way we're going to have peace in the, well, the way that earth is going to have the peace during Christ's reign in his thousand year reign. I don't think I'm going to live to see that though. I don't. I know everyone seems to think that it's the end times, but I believe that when you, when you think it's near, it's not because he said it's a thief in the night. <laughs> You're not going to know. Um, so I always think, you know, when people are talking about peace on earth, I just don't think it's attainable. But here Isaiah is saying, you still need to walk in the light of the Lord as if he is reigning the earth. Okay, I like that. You enjoy the blessings of the Messiah's reign right now. You don't have to live a dark, depressing, discouraging Christian life. You can walk in the light of the Lord. What is it that gets you down, that brings darkness into your life? How can it compare to the light of the Lord? Is the darkness of spiritual attack, of unfaithful friends, bad circumstances, shame, guilt, anything greater than the light of the Lord? It cannot be. I like that. Let us walk in the light of the world of the Lord. So much commentary in one little sentence. <laughs> Let's tell you what I'm gonna do. I left my
This makes me think of that song. When I was a young girl, um, one Christmas, my mother, my parents gave me an Amy Grant uh, CD. And um, and it had that song. Um, oh, what was it? It was a, it was a Bible verse, actually. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I have to look it up. So I drew a little picture. A light. Okay. Okay, now let's talk about six through nine. You, Lord, have abandoned your people. They are full of superstitions from the east. They practice divination like the Philistines and embrace pagan customs. So Judah had allowed the false gods of foreigners to capture their attention. This was not an anti-immigrant statement. God is not against the cultures and customs of other peoples except where those customs and cultures honor and worship false gods. Perhaps in the name of diversity, the leaders and people of Judah were allowing the worship of false gods. Their land is also full of silver and gold. Judah had allowed the false gods of wealth and materialism to captivate their attention. Because Judah was in the time of economic prosperity, they were far more prone to economic idolatry. Oh, that makes sense. And we can relate to that, can't we? I mean, I, for one, love capitalism. Who wants to be poor? Um, I've been there. It's hard. It, it hurts your, your soul. It hurts you. But never, ever have we worshipped things. And that hasn't been a that's not a drive. It was never a drive to make so much money, to spend money. My husband and I, our drive was to work together as a team so that we could be comfortable. That's it. We live in a 90-year-old house and we're going to sell it. And... um, Yeah, we made the decision over Thanksgiving... We're going to sell this 90 year old house and we're going to ask for a certain price because of the area that we live in. We're selling it as is and we'll probably get what we're asking for. We really will. It's a, it's a kind of a long story. Um, we have not, we haven't put much money into this house. We fixed a shower floor that collapsed. That's a hilarious story. Bear and I fell through the floor, not in the shower. <laughs> No, but anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, we've decided to move. We're going to take whatever we make off this house and buy another house, a new to us house. No house payment, just taxes. I'm going to be 50 I can't get another, I don't want another house loan. I would be approved. I'm a teacher. I have good credit. That's not what we're about. We're not about making money to spend money. Sometimes that's the problem. That It can be that simple. I think people sometimes think that being rich, that, oh, I can't be, uh, uh, what is he right? economic idolatry I can't be one of the I can't I don't have that cuz I'm not rich but if it's all you're obsessed with yeah 
Their land is full of idols. Oh, I like this commentary. Listen to this. Judah had allowed idols to captivate their attention because everyone has an innate tendency to worship themselves. Said so in the verse, the work of their hands that which their own fingers have made. That's very true. So in that verse, I can find it for you. Verse 8, their land is full of idols. They bow down to the work of their hands. To what their fingers have made. So then they're, they're starting to be very humanistic. You know. So it's either worship an idol or they worship themselves. We are tempted to worship what we have made and accomplished. Instead of worship the, worshiping the one who made us. This was not an anti-work statement. God wants us to work hard and be pleased with the work of our own hands. <clears throat> And to see the accomplishment that our own fingers have made, this is a rebuke against those who worship what they have made and what they have done. Oh, again, that, that brings me to, to wealth, right? Look at me. Look at this thing that I bought. I made this. I And I, and, and I worked so hard. But wow, that kind of hit in a funny spot. Hmm. We should take care of the things that we buy, but we shouldn't value it more than our family, right? That kind of hit me. There's some items in my house that I don't have a lot of nice things. I have a lot of hand-me-downs, but there are certain things that I get really upset with. And then I'll even say the words, I worked for this. This is mine. You don't have a right to take it and, and, and ruin it. Those are harsh words. Because it's not coming from a place of love or empathy. It's coming from a place where I'm I'm honing in on the fact that this object is important to me. Okay. I'll do something about the lighting. I can see that I have a lot of shadows. But I don't usually film from this angle. But okay, here we go. Now, um... People bow down and each man humbles himself. So there were people that were worshiping, but they were simply worshiping the wrong things and humbling themselves before the wrong things. Therefore, do not forgive them. That's what it says in verse 9. Therefore, do not forgive them. This is what... This is what Isaiah is saying to the Lord. Their worship of foreign gods, of riches, and idols were sincere. And then we get into verse 10. Go into the rocks and hide in the ground from the fearful presence of the Lord. Okay. I'm a little lost, so I'll hang in there. So apparently, this is the be so all of verse 10 to 22, which I will not be reading today. Um, so I guess I'm going to stop right there and then I'll read, I'll reread 10 to 22 tomorrow. This is a description of the day of judgment. Oh.
So I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. I'll read. Well, well I'm already, I'm pre-reading and I, chap, verse 10 to verse 22 is, wow, it's pretty packed. And uh, the day of the Lord, that would be when he comes back. Yeah. Okay, so we will unpack that. Um, so yeah, the, I'm going to write down this interesting, I've never, I've actually never used this phrase before, but I'm going to write it down. I hear my coffee bubbling away. Let's see here. They were prone to economic idolatry. And then I'm going to make a notation on verse 8. They're worshiping the wrong things. Okay. So I wrote little notes. They need to worship the one who made them. And I'm pointing that to verse 8. Um, and I also wrote that they're worshiping the wrong things. I did a little picture of a light to remember that we need to walk in the light of the Lord. Um and then I also uh, highlighted um, six to seven, and I annotated that they were prone to economic idolatry. Okay. Thank you for joining me. It's a very simple Bible study, but it's baby food. That's what we're doing right now. We're just taking it easy. Um, this is how I study little chunks at a time and I think that we'll get we'll get more out of it please I know that I was having problems with comments but then someone commented so <laughs> I hope everyone's able to comment if not please message me um, make sure that you like and subscribe I don't think that's a reason why um, you would have a problem commenting um, might may, might be your settings but I checked my settings everyone um, even people who aren't subscribed to me can comment. Um, so you please leave a comment, prayer request, anything that you would like and, uh, have a beautiful day.